Welcome back to Paul and Cooks. I'm Nick Miles, and we are in our Bradley Design and Education Center kitchen. And we have made two dishes with Bill and Michael from Shea Jose. We've already done the shrimp on lettuce or shrimp on salad, which is an appetizer you have on your menu. We've done your world famous lime enchilada, chicken lime enchiladas. And now we're going to get on to the calapacita, right? Am I saying that correctly? Calabacitas. Yeah. Calabacitas. That is it. Yeah. All right. Which is a side or vegetable dish? It's a nice veg dish. In our restaurant, we actually have it as an entree. It's a big plate with rice and beans, and you get tortillas to make little wraps. Let's talk about what ingredients it takes to make calabacita. Well, we've got, uh, in our, we use zucchini. The word calabasa means squash. Calabacita means little squashes. So we just chop them up small into wedges. We add in some julienne red onion and some chopped cilantro. And here we've got some uh, corn kernels that have been mixed with roasted red chilies. Uh, you could just use uh, regular sweet bell peppers, red peppers, roast them, and then dice them up. There's also some red onion. There's some ground pasilla negro chilies in here and uh, salt and pepper. So we're just going to toss all that in here. And that's and basically it. I mean, that's, that's, right, that's right. most it's of the a, recipe. It's simple. You can chop all this the day before and uh, just have it in your fridge ready to be sauteed. A little bit of oil in the pan, and uh, before it starts to smoke, but when it starts to shimmer, is when you want to put your veg in. Those ingredients can be a little bit complicated for people. Hope you're not trying to make note of those at home because we have everything on the website at paulandcookstv.com. Yeah, that's about right. Now it's just, oh, look at that. You see, I can never do that at home. Oh, I'd, be use, no I'd be using the handy vac everywhere, trying yeah. to get it up from inside the stove. What are we adding in there? I just added in a little bit of salt, and this is a mix of uh, ground dried chilies and herbs, a little bit of oregano and thyme. And you'll know that it's ready to move on to the next stage. When you look at the bottom of the pan, you can move it aside, and you might be able to see some of the, uh, the herbs that we put in, along with some of the pieces of the vegetables, will be starting to stick to the pan and the oil that's in there has become colored with our seasoning. That means the seasonings are starting to toast and develop a little bit more flavor than if you had just dumped them in there on their own. If you want to make it a vegan dish, you can be at this point that we're at right now and deglaze with jalapeno juice here. I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Now is the time. And Bill, where do you get jalapeno juice? Jalapeno juice is the pickling juice from when you get pickled jalapenos. Those uh, jalapenos that are in a can from the store that are a little soft and you know, not as green as a fresh jalapeno. Uh, squeeze a lime. And then some of the cream. Yeah. And now this is gonna saute for a while. This cream is gonna bubble up. It's gonna start to reduce and thicken. Excellent. And it'll be a thick cream sauce around all the vegetables. Now, while that is reducing, we're gonna tell you a little bit how to make some great cocktails in this week's mixology. Neil from Carlisle, and Neil, you're gonna make a cocktail for us in our mixology segment. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna make a Snake River Manhattan. Nice. So we're just gonna use the uh, Snake River Stampede whiskey. Two ounces of that. Now is two ounces enough? No, let's go for a little more. Sometimes uh, a little extra, which would be another half ounce, two and a half ounces makes a really nice Manhattan. Okay. And it doesn't stray from the original formula and it's also, uh, it makes it a little more spirit driven cocktail, which I actually really, really enjoy. And then from there, it's gonna be vermouth. So I actually prefer this Carpano Antica vermouth. It's got a little more um, acid and a little more- a little less herbs. Right, exactly, <laughs> a little less herbs. Now how much, sorry, how much vermouth? Three quarters ounce of vermouth. And then two dashes, Angostura bitters. The bitters just kind of brings it back. The, ver the uh, uh, vermouth can be a little bit sweet, and the bitters just kind of rounds it out just a little bit. And then from there, we're going to add a little bit of ice and stir it. And it's really important to stir this cocktail, not shake it. You told me a secret about stirring. The mm -hmm. less noise? The less noise, the better your cocktail is. Because what you're doing is you're not injecting any water into the spirit itself. You're just chilling it down. It lets the viscosity kind of um, speak for itself. And again, mouthfeels are really important to your cocktail. Some drinks that are more acid driven, like a mojito or a margarita, it's really important to shake because you want to get all your spirit injected into the uh, um, lemon and the lime. But when you're dealing with scotches and whiskeys and gins, you want to be really gentle with the spirit because they're fused with botanicals. And 
there you just want to finish it with a nice little cherry excellent now if you want to know more about how to make any of our mixology cocktails go to portlandcookstv.com okay it looks like it's uh, ready to roll yes this is done let's have you try it out so you can see how the veg is not too soft now we actually usually save the tasting until the very end of the show but I'm going to taste a little bit of the calabacitas with an S and uh, Mmm. Mmm. Tasty. I like. Tasty. Of course, it's really bad when the host has a mouthful to tell you that Portland Cooks will be back in just a moment. Mm. 